Are you getting crappy sleep? Like can't fall asleep, not staying asleep, or not even waking up feeling rested? Well, guess what? Not only is that a problem because you don't feel good, but it's 100% affecting your brain, your lymphatic system's ability to drain. Yep, if you're not getting good sleep, your brain's not draining, and guess what? If you have toxins building up around your brain, that's a problem. I know that you would agree. So let's talk about eight things that you can do that's gonna support better sleep and ultimately support better drainage. Let's dive in. Number one, I want you to create a wake sleep cycle that you do as close to seven days a week as possible. Now, what does that mean? It means you wake up at around the same time and you go to bed around the same time. And that doesn't really vary weekdays to weekends. Why? Because our body is a clock. It gets on a routine, right? We typically have kids on a routine because they do better. Well, as adults, we also do better when we're on a routine. So staying as close to that cycle as possible is going to really help your body and your ability to sleep better. The other thing that I'm going to throw into that wake sleep cycle is when you wake up in the morning, Morning. Get morning sunlight in your eyeballs. Ideally go outside, look in the sky, don't wear sunglasses for a few minutes. That sun first thing in the morning is going to help set your circadian rhythm. We're going to talk what that means in just a second, but when we get sun in our eyes, it's going to help give us more energy and then it's going to help us be able to fall asleep later in the day at bedtime when we're supposed to be sleeping. The next thing, number two, if you're on electronics or you're under like fluorescent lights all day and you're exposed to blue light, I'm going to highly recommend that you look into and get a pair of blue blockers. Now I stopped I stopped wearing them on videos because people kept commenting how ridiculous they look and how distracting it is, which I get. Sometimes the glare can be annoying, but I can tell you I 100% use these because what it does is it blocks out the blue light from getting into my eyes. Now why that's important is blue light is actually going to hinder our body's natural circadian rhythm. So a lot of people right now are talking about cortisol and how bad cortisol is. Well guess what? When we first wake up in the morning, cortisol should be high. Cortisol is our go hormone. That's our like wake up and go. Cortisol and melatonin, which melatonin is our sleep hormone. This is the one that makes us sleepy and tired and ready for bed. These work in opposition. It's kind of like a teeter-totter, okay? The problem is when we're on electronics, like TVs, computers, phones, under like incandescent or fluorescent lights, what it's going to do is it's going to send a lot of blue light into our eyes, which is going to alter our body's ability to raise melatonin and make us tired before bed. So when we wear these and the yellow is for the day when the sun is out and the orange is for when the sun goes down, we wear these ones before bed, or you can wear them anytime. That's going to help block out the blue light, which is going to make it easier for your body to maintain that cortisol melatonin balance, that teeter-totter that we need in order to wake up feeling refreshed and go to bed at night at a decent hour. So blue blockers is something that I 100% would recommend adding to your routine. I do and it makes a huge difference. Number three, we can also use supplements that can help support better sleep or falling asleep a little faster or staying asleep. So let's talk about some of the ones out there and then I'll talk about one product that I personally take every single night that has all of them in it. The first one is magnesium. So we can take magnesium most people are actually magnesium deficient. And the magnesium, because there's a lot out there, that helps support sleep is malate and glycine. Those really help with relaxation. So we want to be nice and relaxed before bed, and I usually will take my malate and glycinate right before bed. So magnesium is one. The second one is GABA. So GABA is something that will help lower anxiety, improve relaxation, restfulness. So we can also take GABA. Now, what I personally would prefer somebody to do before just jumping in and taking a whole bunch of GABA, looking at taking taurine. Taurine is actually what will activate the GABA receptors in your brain. So when your receptors for GABA are activated, the GABA that you have present can actually function better. So I personally like starting with like, let's make what we have work better. And then if we don't have enough, let's take and start to supplement with a little bit. So magnesium, GABA, taurine, followed by L-theanine. So L-theanine is also something that helps promote rest and relaxation. And then there's also inositol. Inositol 
inositol is super interesting because what it does is it actually helps the neurotransmitters to help increase sleep quality. So neurotransmitters are super important for a whole lot of functions. But taking inositol will help with those neurotransmitters, ultimately resulting in better sleep. The supplement that I take is called Relax Max. It actually has a really nice flavor and I drink it before bed. It's a drink and it's made by Zymogen. If you guys want, we'll put some links below where you can get Relax Max and try it out for yourself. The next thing that I'm going to recommend is look at your bedroom. Our bedroom is going to set the stage for good sleep. So a couple things to note in your bedroom. One, the temperature. Having a cooler temperature is ultimately going to help you sleep better. It's going to help regulate your body temperature and you're going to get a better sleep. So having, and research has shown, your temperature somewhere between 60 and 65. We usually keep it about 65, which is like 15 to 18 Celsius, I think. We keep it on the higher end of that, but keeping it lower and having blankets on you is going to help you get better sleep. The other thing outside of temperature is making sure that your room is dark. Look at your alarm clock. Look at what other electronics you have plugged in. Are there lights? Even if it's like blue or green or yellow lights, we don't want those. Like I have an air freshener, like an air doctor in my room, and we turn off all the lights on it so that we don't see it. It doesn't affect our sleep. So massively change out, turn off those electronics, or if you can't, put something over the light so you don't see it. What I personally prefer is wearing like a sleep mask versus having the blackout shades because I I want natural sunlight to wake me up in the morning. Blackout shades don't allow that. So I tend, and most people tend when we use blackout shades, to wake up groggy versus if we're wearing a light, like a white, I wear a white colored eye mask. It's gonna block everything out, but it's gonna let that natural light come in in the morning, which is gonna wake me up. And when you wake up with the sun, you're gonna feel more refreshed. Another thing you can do is have a warm bath right before bed. And by right before bed, I really mean more like two hours before bed. Because what that's gonna do is it's gonna raise your body temperature, your core temperature, which is also gonna indicate and like signal, okay, it's getting ready for sleepy time. We gotta go to sleep. So using a warm bath or a warm shower, or even better, adding some Epsom salt to your bath because the magnesium in there can also help relax you and make you calmer and make you wanna go to sleep. So give that a try. The last few things that I would recommend is one, don't eat right before bed. Don't do it. Why? Eating right before bed is going to require a whole bunch of energy. Eating is very energy demanding. And so if you're having to digest food while you're trying to wind down and go to sleep, it's gonna make it harder for you to fall asleep. So make sure that you're not eating right before bed. It's going to prolong how long it takes you to fall asleep. And that does include snacking. And eating is also gonna increase your resting heart rate. We want a low resting heart rate. Low resting heart rate is ultimately going to improve sleep quality. So if we're eating right before bed and eating increases our heart rate, we're going to have a lower quality of sleep, which means we're not going to get into that deep sleep that we need for our brain to drain. The last two things that I recommend, one is mouth tape. Now you might be like, well, what in the heck does mouth tape have to do with draining? When we're forced to breathe through our nose, it's going to increase nitric oxide. And nitric oxide is necessary in order to help with that sleep cycle. Remember, we have a couple sleep cycles that our body has to go through and we need some healthy ranges in it. We can't just have deep sleep. We can't just be in light sleep or just REM. We have to have variation in those three and breathing through our nose is going to help us cycle through them. So you can start by mouth taping and having the tape going up and down during the day to get used to it. Obviously, don't tape your mouth if you're completely congested. You have to be able to breathe through your nose. Otherwise, that's not going to work. But practice during the day and as you get used to it, it's more and more comfortable to sleep with it at night. Honestly, I can't sleep without taping my mouth now. It's one of those things I have to tape my mouth or I have a hard time sleeping. And then the last thing is go through and do the specific seven or the total 12 lymph nodes before you go to bed just to ensure that all of those lymph nodes, all of those doors to your lymphatic system are open so that your lymph can properly drain. And if you're really, really short on time, make sure you focus on the lymph nodes in your head and neck. All right, give those a try, start implementing them and allow that brain to drain better so that you wake up feeling more rested and you have less toxins and better functioning brain from your lymphatic system draining properly. Thanks for being here and happy draining.